So welcome to this video and we're going to talk about blood pressure or give it its more technical term hypertension. Hyper just means high and tension just means uh, pressure. So okay well let's let's look at blood pressure and what it actually is first and also establish that it's not a disease. It's actually a response. Your body will put your blood pressure up in certain situations and lower it in certain situations. It's all about the delivery of blood. So you have arteries, which, you know, basically are long tubes. And when your heart goes beat and it pushes blood out, it will go through that tube and it will exert pressure. That's the first one. So that's the systolic the top number when you do your blood pressure, the pressure pushing against those walls. And then as the um, heart relaxes and it fills up with blood, that's the diastolic pressure. So you've got a higher pressure as the top number because it's coming from the heart, from that big pump. And then you've got the lower number, which is more of the relaxed, uh, what we call, um, you know, the returning blood into the heart. So, we have to look at the volume of blood and understand that every time the, the body pumps or the heart pumps, a certain amount of blood is going out. Now, we need a certain amount of blood circulating at all times. If your heart muscle is weak, if that pump isn't particularly powerful, you might find that your body's response will be to make it beat faster. So although it's not as effective as, say, uh, a very strong heart, because it's beating faster, the volume of blood stays the same. You do need a certain amount of pressure for certain things to happen. And we shouldn't all have the same blood pressure. And in fact, before the 1950s, we would have blood pressure tables, which were age related. And the reason for that is that if we go back to those arteries, as you get older, they stiffen up, they're less elastic. And uh, therefore, more pressure is, is needed to make the fluid go through, to make the blood go through the arteries. So, um, so these readings of 120 over 80 are not really relating to the aging population because the aging population should, should theoretically have slightly higher blood pressure and the younger should have slightly less um, ratings because they have elastic arteries now the easiest way to demonstrate that you need different blood pressure is if, if you imagine a giraffe with a very long neck to get that blood up to the top of the head there you need more pressure than if that giraffe had a shorter neck. So we can't say that blood pressure for giraffes are all the same. So if you've got a short necked giraffe, it will have less blood pressure than a long necked giraffe. And, and if we then take that obvious difference into the human population, we're all very different. We're all have different levels of activity. We definitely have different levels of body composition, different, different ways of moving. Some people are in hot climates some people are in cold climates so the amount of blood going around at any one time is going to be very different and therefore their blood pressure is going to be different as well so once we understand it is a response then we understand it's not a disease and we do things that can raise it or lower it possibly we, we, we could be less worried about it so we call it hypertension and we think that 120 over 80 is, is the best number to be. But that is arbitrary and actually set by insurance companies for their premiums rather than uh, for clinical outcomes. And you mentioned SALT. Now, unbelievable, though it seems, when you search for studies to support the claim that lowering SALT intake improves health outcomes and lowers blood pressure, that there's actually no meaningful research in humans to support the low salt recommendations. So let's, let's look at why that is. seems that high insulin levels actually play a role. The kidneys have a job of recycling things like uric acid and sodium, and they're genetically programmed to do this. So higher insulin levels leads to water retention, which in turn leads to dysregulation of sodium and uric acid levels. So the high water retention will mean that the endothelial cells will bulge, basically, and decrease the internal circumference of the arteries. Now, if you can imagine you've got a hose pipe and you turn the water on in your hose pipe and then you squeeze the hose pipe to make that interior smaller, the pressure will go up. So insulin seems to play a bigger role. 
Yes, salt is involved there because what's actually happening is the kidneys and the sodium and uric acid level regulation being impacted on by insulin. So maybe we're looking at high insulin levels being a, a problem rather than sodium levels. See, the, the, the job of sodium is to hold on to water in the blood vessels. So um, without sodium, you can't hold on to the volume of fluid. So your blood pressure will drop. Now, that doesn't mean that's a good thing. We want the uh, appropriate blood pressure for your body. So we don't really want to sort of mess with um, less salt, more salt. We want to actually get to the right level of salt. But the amount of sodium held in the body is pretty much down to insulin. And the job of insulin, like I say, is in the kidneys and to hold on to sodium. So therefore, if you have a high level of insulin, your body is going to hold on to much more of the sodium. So if you have less insulin, as on a carnivore diet or even low carb or keto, you're going to lose more of that sodium. And if you look at the dietary guidelines, and you've halved your level of sodium, you'll probably lower your blood pressure by two points. But this is in general and across the whole of the population. So I wouldn't worry too much about thinking about the salt. I would worry more about insulin levels. And then you can see this in real people um, constantly in low carb and keto communities and in the carnivore as they have reduced their carbohydrate intake and therefore reduced their insulin uh, levels, we see most people have a lowering of their blood pressure. And that's from very high levels, you know, so over the 180s to, you know, 180, it may be over uh, 140, something like that, which is, which is high. Um, but I wouldn't say try to get to 120 over 80. I would I would look at age related tables and then um, try to get to that sort of level. But blood pressure, hypertension, um, definitely I wouldn't worry so much about the salt. I'd worry more about the insulin. Some people with high blood pressure are not overweight. Will that still be an insulin issue? Two things there. If you have additional weight, the if you're overweight, basically, over, you have an overplus of, of fat on your body, which is basically what we're talking about. Um, to motor your body, to move it, you need more uh, nutrients. You need more volume in your blood because you have more mass to move. So uh, a really strange example to give you is it a, a power lifter. If they're hooked up to a blood pressure machine when they do the lift, their blood pressure goes up to maybe 400 over 200 just momentarily. So that's because they're shifting this huge amount of weight. Um, blood is the delivery of nutrients, things like glucose, which I think everybody knows you need for a little bit of energy. So if you're if you're moving more than your body really needs you're going to have an increase in, in blood pressure. So that's just physiological and, and logical con con considering what's happening. So you can lose that fat, but still have high blood pressure because the background insulin is not fixed. That's actually what's going on. So you might think, wow, you know, I look like a, a rail now. Look at me. It's great, but I still have high blood pressure. It doesn't make any sense. That, that tends not to happen. You, send, you still see a lowering of blood pressure when the body composition goes the right way, but it might not be low enough for that particular individual that, that maybe they're looking at insurance or they're worried about the numbers a bit too much. Then we would look at the background insulin. And I think once you fix the levels of insulin, then you would see a, a continual lowering of the blood pressure. So in summary, we are looking to get the inflammation reduced. More about that than cholesterol, maybe? Not just about insulin? When, when we're looking at it in relation to salt, water retention and insulin, yes, there could be blockages as well. I mean, that is another thing. Obviously, you get the same effect if you've got an artery like that and there's a blockage on the inside of the wall. Then, yes, you are you are literally squeezing that hose pipe again. So you will need a little bit more blood pressure. But we will be talking about um, cholesterol, LDL, HDL, VLDL, RDL and all these particles in a different section. Um, for now, we were talking about blood pressure. And the most common thing that people talk about is reducing salt to reduce blood pressure, which I say there, you can't find a study on humans that actually says that happens and works to any meaningful um, extent. So this is not something that resolves quickly. Yeah, I think the dysregulation of the, 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 the kidney at the sodium reception of the kidney, um, that takes a little while. So I'm thinking maybe 
after 150 days of eating carnivore and being as good as you possibly could be, then you'll start seeing resolution. But in saying that, we have people where it's much quicker. Um, it could be small uh, decreases in the blood pressure, but it's it's meaningful to them. And I've had people message me every week, you know, and within seven weeks, they're like, wow, it's trending downwards. It's not amazing, but it's trending downwards. So what is the best way to look after the heart coach, Stephen? Uh, nutrition is key. You don't want to be inflaming that area. Uh, good levels of essential fatty acids are really good. The heart is an amazing organ. It will use whatever energy it can get its hands on. Um, it does seem to prefer ketones. So you need to make sure that you are hydrated. That's an easy thing to do. Uh, look at your urine. If it's clear, you're drinking too much and you probably got a got an electrolyte imbalance because of that if it's dark urine you're not drinking enough you need a straw colored urine and that will help you with your electrolyte balance mm -hmm.